So today, I'll be ranking every single crop in Stardew Valley. A lot of people have asked me which crops in Stardew Valley are the best or the most efficient. So today, I'll be ranking every single one in the game, all of the late game, all of the early game ones, and telling you which ones I think are best for both selling and any other reason that you could possibly think of using them. So a lot of people, if you were to ask their like best crops in Stardew Valley, right, they'd probably just go by gold per day. But gold per day only matters when the limiting factor on your farm is the amount of space rather than the amount of money you have, right? So this is concerned with how much money you get per tile, which is not always the most important statistic, right? But I'm also going to be considering other things like usability, lasting to the next season, general use, uh, gift abilities, stuff like that. So Amaranth. Amaranth is pretty unremarkable of my memory. One thing I do like it is that it's harvestable with the scythe. It just makes it satisfying to harvest, though it isn't very profitable if I remember. The one thing I will say that I remember about this crop is that you can get a free heart with Marnie, basically, by doing it, um, which is actually a really easy way to get the mayor's shorts because if you give it to Marnie, she gives you a quest and she asks you to bring her an amaranth. So if you bring that, you get a free heart with Marnie. But besides that, it's a pretty unremarkable crop. I'm going to put it in probably like C tier. Okay, artichoke. I've never even grown artichoke. Oh, because it's available from year two on. That explains a lot. Well, I feel like you would never have any reason to grow artichoke ever. How many days does it take to harvest? Eight days, three harvests a season. Interesting. I feel like I'd rather just grow pumpkins, right? Plus the fact that they're only available from year two on, it's kind of annoying. So I feel like this is pretty useless. I'll put it in D tier. I can't see a reason I would ever grow artichoke. Okay. Beets. The beets are a pretty good turnaround time, honestly. In six days, you make an 80G profit. That's pretty good. And they can make sugar. I forgot about that. And you use them in the Mr. QI quest. You need to grow like 10 of them, I think, and put them in Mary Lewis's fridge. I put beets in like B tier. Not like super high B tier or anything like that, but definitely high. Okay. All right. I feel like we are now going to get into the most controversial pick on the entire list, okay? And blueberries. Blueberries are a very controversial topic in the Stardew Valley community. Blueberries are my personal favorite crop in the game because when I first started playing the game, they were a lot stronger. So like I associate like all that with it, but I do know that they're not that great. And a lot of the times it's better to plant something like melons in summer. Blueberries are still really good for fast cash and they are regrowable and if you don't have access to something like starford in summer they're still a very good pick and picking them has a really satisfying pluck noise I don't know. Blueberries are just like, when I think of Stardew Valley, I think of blueberries, but they're still not like the best crop you could be growing in summer for very many reasons. But I'll say it like, I'll put in an A tier. I mean, I don't think any of the controversy comes from people saying blueberries are a bad crop. Blueberries are a good crop. They're just not the best crop. Blue jazz is pretty bad. I will say blue jazz, I really like the look of. You can get like honey from flowers, but blue jazz, I don't even think blue jazz is the best honey you can get in spring, right? I have to look this up because I know literally nothing about the honey system. It's better than tulip, apparently. Still, blue jazz are pretty bad and they don't stack. The only thing I will say that saves this from F tier is that I really like the way blue jazz looks and it's my favorite looking flower in the game. Put it in D tier. Okay, bok choy. Four days. I guess it's like pretty fast cash. This would probably be like a god tier crop if it was in spring, but it's not. It's in autumn. Yeah, bok choy is pretty bad. C tier. Um, I forgot that cactus fruit is a crop technically because if you don't know, you can grow cactus seeds inside. I have literally never even considered if these things are good or not. It says they make a, lot, a decent amount of gold per day. But if you're at the point where you have flower pots, you have like a lot of other options. Throw it in F tier. All right, okay, cauliflower are pretty good if you don't have another option in spring. The problem is that spring has the most crops that I like use consistently. There's so many in there that I would like actually use like rhubarb, strawberries, potatoes, parsnips. So just like the competition is really fierce in spring, I would say. So I think cullies are like, okay. I want to put it in like high B tier. Let's, But it's like, it's pretty high B tier. It's like almost at A tier. Though I will say, I think that the giant crop version of giant cauliflower is like the most beautiful of the three. Look how cool that looks. Okay, coffee beans. Now coffee beans is a tough one because it's one of the few crops that you can't 
buy. You just sort of have to like cultivate it. So basically, if you don't know, you can get coffee beans through a couple different ways. You can get them through the traveling cart, I guess. Yeah, and dust sprites. Yeah. I think the problem with coffee beans is that they're so rare and it's hard to turn them into like artisanal product because you can turn them into coffee, but it's like really expensive and they can last from spring to summer, right? So they can last in two seasons, which is kind of cool, but they produce every single day, which is kind of annoying. It takes up like way too much of my time, but I do really like the pluck sound. I'm thinking like low B, high C. Like I always grow a couple coffee beans, you know what I mean? Like I can't say this, the same for like amaranth and bok choy. Okay, corn, I might have a controversial opinion. First of all, I also do not like corn in real life. It's sort of like a beginner's trap because I feel like a lot of people tend to buy corn their first summer because they're like, ooh, this crop grows into fall and it's regrowable. That seems like a lot of good things, but corn is like pretty bad. It's like pretty bad. It's not very profitable at all. And I can't think of anything you really use it for. Besides the community center, it's in the quality crops bundle and the regular autumn crops bundle. But besides that, corn's pretty useless, I would say. Top of D tier, like bottom of C tier. Okay, cranberries, cranberries, cranberries. Cranberries are another controversial crop. I say all the berries are pretty controversial in the Stardew Valley community. If you don't know, all of the berries used to be really, really strong in Stardew Valley, but recently they've been been nerfed. Not recently, it was like within the first couple months that Sardi was released. But they're still pretty strong. The problem is they produce too frequently and by autumn you probably have either preserved jars or kegs, so you're better off going with like pumpkins, but they're still pretty good. They also make like a good forage snack if you're still needing energy and stuff. I would say like A tier for cranberries. They're not nearly as satisfying to plant as blueberries, so I'm gonna put them under them. Um, okay, eggplant. I have not grown eggplant like ever really. They are regrowable and you need them for the autumn crops bundle, but besides that, I can't think of anything significant that you really use eggplants for. You do need one to for the community center, but eh, D tier. Why would you ever grow eggplants? Okay, fairy rose. Fairy rose is cool. It makes the most expensive honey. They're very cute and very good on like farm builds. They are used in fairy dust. And they're a love gift for jazz. And jazz is really annoying to try and court. I'll put it in like low B tier. Like low, low, low B tier, but still pretty good. Okay, garlic. Garlic is the spring crop that isn't available till year two. So I honestly know nothing about it, which probably tells you everything you need to know about garlic. I have never grown garlic ever in my life. It's used in the oil of garlic, which you buy from the dwarf and these things. This is horrible. Why is this available from year two onwards? I could not tell you. F tier. Garlic gives you five golden walnuts. Okay. Sure. Happy now. Okay, grapes. Grapes is like the weirdest crop you can grow in the game for me. If you don't know, grapes are also a summer forage in addition to a crop you can be able to plant, which is really weird. I don't understand why they did that. And it's also, this is a very personal bias and I will openly admit to that. I hate growing trellis crops. It is so annoying to plant. They're so annoying to walk through. They block other crops so you can't see them. They are so annoying and like for me, maybe Maybe they're like, maybe they're like super useful, but like, I really, I really do not see why you would grow grapes. I'm putting them in C tier. If you really want to grow a regrowable crop, grow cranberries. Green beans, same thing. I don't like them either. Green beans can be nice because there's not a lot of regrowable crops in spring, but still not very good. And I just hate trellis crops. Okay, hops. Everyone I know wants hops to be in F tier, but hops are actually like really strong. And I, they're my favorite of the trellis crops. The hops actually don't look too bad. I actually like the way that they're designed on the farm. And hops, if you don't know, are the most profitable greenhouse crop. If if you have the kegs to support it because pale ale is super strong but they're certainly unique i really like them because they're like one of the most unique crops in summer um and i'm definitely gonna put them at least in a tier probably s tier if it wasn't for uh the trellis aspect of it hot peppers actually have like a lot of uses since they're used in pepper poppers they're lewis's loved gift and shane's loved gift and they're used in the spicy eel and they're used in the summer crops bundle they're not super profitable but i'll always grow a couple peppers every single year i put them in like b tier okay chaos pretty good. Kale is a really useful crop in spring. You get the most like bang for your buck like early on. Plus I love it's very, it, this is also is not relevant at all to like profitability. It is so much fun to harvest a crop of the scythe. It is beyond fun. I want to say like high B, low, low A just for the scything alone. Put in like high B. Okay. Melons are pretty good. Both like profitability wise, like your first summer, it 
it's definitely your best crop that you can grow. And because by the time you get to summer, you should be able to use like preserve jars and stuff. So making melon jam is like pretty strong. Giant melons are pretty cool. They're using a couple quests. Yeah, and they're using summer crops bundle and the quality crops bundle. I feel like melons are definitely an S tier. Melons are pretty, pretty strong. Okay, parsnips are pretty good. I feel like they're also like very memorable because they're like the first crop you get in the game. They give you pretty, pretty fast cash in like the first spring if you need it. And they have a really, really quick turnaround time. Uh, though I will say the one thing that is against them is that they will forever live in the shadow of the potato. Cause the potato is like, it takes like two extra days to harvest and it gives a lot less money, but they're still pretty good. I feel like I'm gonna put them in B. I, want, I definitely put them above kale. Okay, poppies are horrible. Poppies are a universal hate, which I don't know why. They're not even like profitable. I don't even know why you would ever grow poppies, except for Penny. Penny loves them. And they're using this stupid chef's bundle. And they're one of those things that has multiple colors. So then when you harvest them, you get like a gajillion of them. I hate the flowers that when you harvest them, you get like a million of them. It clogs the crud out of your inventory. Not, not worth it in any regard, F tier. Okay, pineapples are really interesting. Pineapples are like pretty strong, but just not strong enough, you know? Like it was right there and everyone thought that they were gonna be like the new crop, uh, but it like fell a little short in like the numbers aspect. Pineapples are still really good don't get me wrong. I will say it just lives in the shadow of star fruit and ancient fruit. It does neither one of the things that it does better. And you also get it like super late in the game, but pineapple's pretty profitable. Oh, also I forgot you can't buy pineapple seeds. That makes them way worse. I'll say like high B, eh, maybe low A. I don't really see a practical reason behind them. You know, I I'm gonna say look, high B. Okay. <sighs> I don't know if this is controversial. I'm gonna put potatoes in S tier. Potatoes are really, really strong. They're really, really good for your experience points. They can be multiple harvest crops. They're needed in the community center and the remix one. It's really fast cash your first spring. And a lot of fun stuff can be done with like potato manipping and stuff. Yeah, potatoes on first spring is like the only option. Potatoes are really, really good. Okay, pumpkins I feel like will also be S tier. I learned this when we were practicing for the Stardew Valley Cup, but pumpkins are really strong. Pumpkin jam sells for so much money, man. That is really nice. They have like a giant crop variant. Like this is what you should probably be building towards in your, in autumn. Oh my God, I forgot how many things it was used in. Yeah, and it's a quality crop. Pumpkins are really good. Okay, which, what is that one then? Oh, radish. I don't remember anything about radish. Radish seems like crud. I don't think I've ever grown a radish in my entire life. I can't think of a single thing I would ever need to use a radish for. Uh, F tier. Okay, red cabbage. I hate you more than anything. Probably the most hated crop in the entire game. Funnily enough, pretty profitable and a pretty nice looking crop, but I can't, I can't. The fact that it's not available till year two and like they had to create an entire button when you're creating a farm to try and that guarantees you can get this in year one on, off the traveling cart just makes it so infuriating. And even besides that, you would never have a reason to grow red cabbage. If you don't have star fruit by year two, what are you doing? F tier. Shadow Realm, I hate you. Shadow Realm, enough red cabbage, okay? Okay, rhubarb's pretty good. Rhubarb's a pretty profitable spring crop and it does okay in kegs. The problem with spring, your second year, is that there's not a lot of like super great crops to grow. And probably by spring year two, you probably don't have ancient fruit or there's no like star fruit you could be growing or anything really like that. So rhubarb's pretty good. I think it's the most gold per day crop too. Rhubarb is pretty good. I'm gonna put it in like A tier. The only problem is that it like comes a little too late and it's it's outshined by like a lot of other things, so. Okay, Starfruit is obviously S tier. Obviously S tier. Starfruit is the best crop in the game. Starfruit wine is the most profitable wine in the game. It is the best crop in the game. No contest. The only thing about it that is not nice is that it's uh, not regrowable, but Starfruit is pretty strong. Obvious candidate for the S tier. Okay, now this is honestly the other one I was worried about on this entire list. I was pretty worried about strawberries because I don't even know myself where I would put them. Strawberries are obviously like the best crop in spring, right? Quote unquote, but they appear so late into spring at the egg festival in spring 13, that it's like not great. And people are always like, well, you can save yours up for like your second year in spring. But like, if you do it the second spring into the third spring, by then you'll probably have like all ancient fruit 
or something. It's hard. It's really hard, but they are really, really profitable. They are one of the, like a regrowable crop. They do make a ton of money. They're pretty cheap. It's really, it's really hard. I don't know. I'm going to say high B maybe. Maybe that's controversial, but I feel like you say high B here. Okay. Summer Spangle sucks. Uh, D tier, whatever. I feel nothing towards the Summer Spangle. Honestly, maybe I think I might've put strawberries too high, honestly, here. Because if you think about it, I would prefer to grow all of these crops in spring before I grew strawberries. Okay. Sunflowers are bad. Sunflowers are pretty bad. They give you a seed when they grow, but I honestly find it really annoying. And I think they actually like make less money per day if you don't replant them. They are cheap right at Jojo, which is kind of funny, but they're pretty bad. And like replanting them is really annoying. Okay, sweet gem berries are the most profitable crop in the game, though you can't artisan them, which is kind of annoying. But you can do like a lot of fun things with them and they do get you a star drop, obviously. I find them like really interesting. Whenever I see them in a traveling cart, I'll like buy a couple seeds and then just like plant them in fall. So I'll put it at like the bottom of A tier. Okay, tarot root. Obviously, nobody is like getting tarot root to like sell. You know what I mean? It's not that type of crop. It's for like something else. You like can get them on Ginger Island. If you till them, they grow by themselves and you don't have to water them, which is kind of nice. It's really useful if you're uh, trying to finish that Caroline quest and they do look pretty cool. But they're useful as like currency with the island trader. Not super useful things, but still things nevertheless. So still cool. Obviously, you're buying it for like a very different reason than everything else on this list. So it's kind of hard to judge. But the fact that you don't have to water them makes me want to put in like B tier. Okay, tea leaves. I have never had the desire to... The only reason I got this in my perfection farm was because I needed to get it for, for uh, to ship every forage. They have the weirdest spawning mechanic in the game. If you don't know, you get a tea bush... Uh, you get the recipe from Caroline when you get to her two heart event. And tea leaves can be thrown into a keg to make tea, which is the least useful drink. It has the weirdest spawning mechanic in that it is available every single day in the last week of a season. I do not know why that is, but you don't have to water them, which is kind of nice. They like grow like a tree. It's really hard to judge, but like probably like D tier. You never grow multiple tea, tea bushes. You just have like one. Tomatoes? They, they're using a lot of recipes, I guess. But they're like, I don't see why you would ever grow tomatoes. C tier. Tulips stink. There's never any reason you should grow tulips ever. I don't know why this even exists. They're worse than blue jazz in terms of honey, in terms of everything. They suck. And they they don't even look that pretty. Okay. Rice is really weird because it's another one of those things that you, you don't buy rice. You just like get a couple shoots while you're like going through the mines usually and you like plant them and they just like sort of water themselves. So it's not like you ever like really need them. Like you never go out of your way to get them, but if you have them, they're like kind of nice, you know? I don't ever use the mills, so I don't know. I'll put it in like C tier just because it's like a fun little extra you can get. And I'm never like mad when I get rice. Okay. Wheat has a really quick turnaround time and you can get hay from it, which is pretty nice, honestly. It takes like four days and they can grow from summer until autumn. It is nice a lot of the time if your melons have done growing and you need to use something that'll bridge the gap between summer and autumn because it'll be used for that. And they can be harvested with the scythe. Honestly, wheat is pretty good. It's not like a great crop that you would grow a lot, but definitely high B tier. Scythe harvesting might make it A. Yeah, it is a great bridge crop so that you don't have to redo your fertilizer or any of your hoeing. Okay, yams. I don't think I've grown a yam in my entire Stardew career. This looks, I don't care. Yams, why would you ever grow yams? Screw yams, C tier. Okay, ancient fruit is obviously S tier. Nobody is denying that. Ancient fruit is the best crop in the game, without a doubt. It's not too, too hard to get. I prefer it to growing star fruit. It's regrowing grows once a week, put it out on your farm, never have to worry about it. It's once a week is frequent enough that you're getting consistent profits, but not too frequent enough that you're worrying about it every single freaking day. Ancient fruit is obviously the GOAT. Number one, without a doubt, as S tier. The only thing that is bad about it is that you can't buy it, but that's because it's so dang good. And the time matches with the kegs, which is so nice. You can do the harvesting and your kegs on the same day. Oh, muy magnifique. And that's it. That's everything, I think. Yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna do those. Okay, I think I might drop some of these C tiers down to D. I kind of think this looks a lot cleaner. All right, well, that's the list. After some fiddling around, this is what I've settled on. No more adjustments. Do -do 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 -do.